Hey y'all, I'm Tess Holliday and welcome to my slumber party. Each week I'm going to introduce you to folks who are making the world a better place. So put on your pajamas, grab a snack, and let's change the world from our bedroom. Hey y'all, welcome to my slumber party. I'm so happy to have you guys hanging out with me today. My guest, Auntie Ashley. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's what Bowie calls hers, <laughs> Auntie Ashley. Thank you for coming to my slumber party. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Ashley is a celebrity waxer, educator, Taco Bell aficionado, <laughs> and literally the human that rips hair from my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I literally wrote that in my notes. All things 100% accurate. <laughs> um, who am I? I'm not the only celebrity vagina. You can't say other celebrity vaginas that you wax, can you? Um, I don't have any NDAs. So <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it after thank tell you. me <laughs> thank you for coming in your pajamas obviously that's my rule for my podcast what what do you have on honestly I'm wearing a nice um you can see the sleeves are too short because my <laughs> <laughs> long arms. I thought that they were just like a, a like a cropped length. No. <laughs> uh, a nice Target original mm -hmm. faux silk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, Sustainable. And then um, bunny slippers. You look great. Thank you. I am wearing for my pajamas this um this like legging hoodie Fabletics number that's super cozy. I wore it. Ashley's rolling her eyes for those of you not watching on YouTube. <laughs> Ashley is rolling her eyes because she was over at my house a couple weeks ago when this arrived, this outfit arrived, and it looked so cute on her because <laughs> I made her try it on because I said she could have it and then I decided to keep it. And an insult to injury. <laughs> she wore it today. <laughs> I just thought like. And she's like, it's cute. I'm just going to keep it. <laughs> I mean, once I put it on, like it looked good on you, but it looked better on me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The audacity. <laughs> it's the audacity for me. <laughs> yeah. I also fell asleep in this the other day. So I thought that that, that could count as pajamas because I fell asleep in this outfit. So <laughs> for our snack today, I asked Ashley, hey, what should our snack today be? Mm -hmm. And what did you say? Mm -hmm. Tim Tams. Tim Tams. So I had just been at Trader Joe's and they had their version of the Tim Tam, which is an Australian cookie. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got to get these. I got to get these. And then you texted me saying, what is our snack going to be? And I was like, let's do Tim Tams. And the Tim I, Tam Slam, baby. The Tim Tam Slam. So I don't like Tim Tams. I think mostly because they remind me of Australia. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just don't. I have never been impressed. I love Australia, just in case that doesn't get edited out. <laughs> but... I have just never really gotten like the Tim Tam hype. And I look at me. I'm fat as shit. I love a cookie. Okay, I just, but wait. Are you simply eating a Tim Tam? Okay, so what is... So we're going to do a Tim Tam slam. We're going to do it. What is it? Are we doing it now? Yeah. Okay. So get a Tim Tam. Okay. Here. Thank you. And then get your glass of milk. Okay. And then bite off one corner of your Tim Tam. Just one corner. One corner. Okay. Okay. Now bite off the opposite corner. What? On the other end. Okay. ASMR, you know. Okay. Okay. Now you're going to stick one end of the Tim Tam into the milk and drink it through the other side of the Tim Tam. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. What the <laughs> you drink and then, it through yeah. the Tim Tam? And it'll start disintegrating. And so then you just pop the whole thing in your mouth. Slam it. Okay, can you show me? Yeah. It looks... <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Go for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here I'm gonna I'm I'm going for it. You got it. Now slam it. Slam what? The whole cookie in your mouth. <laughs> Okay. 1,000% times better than just wow. eating a Tim Tam. Wow. But that's delicious. Wow. Right? My brain just exploded right now. A little bit. Yeah. Because then you have that, like, you have the beginning where you get, like, the two little crunchy bites. But then as soon as you drink through it, it's just this mushy, delicious goodness. So yeah. is this a thing that has been around and I just didn't know about it? Yeah, I think I found out about this like eight years ago while watching YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that's why you're get my guest today because you're just constantly enhancing my life. I feel I feel better already. So this week has been listen, I always try to practice gratitude, but this week has felt like a little bit of a shit show. <laughs> I feel like I say this every week, still trying to manage work mm -hmm. and having, you know, having a personal life. It's very small, it's a tiny, <laughs> a sliver. tiny sliver <laughs> of a personal life. And I really haven't done anything except for work and then try to spend time with, with my kids tonight. We are going to do a pizza night and we're going to make our own pizzas, mm -hmm. except for when I was ordering groceries. I'm not good with inches because I've been single for so long. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that an eight inch pizza crust would be fine. And it's great for Bowie, my four year old, to make a pizza. But eight inches is not enough for me, baby. I should have gotten Honestly, like a 12 inch. Eight inches is perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> if you were going to do a it's pizza. It's not the size of the pizza. It's how it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> what would you put if you were coming to our house for a pizza party, which I wish you were because you knew I wouldn't, you know, that I would invite you if you, I have no, you know, I want you at my house 24 seven. Right. What would you put on your pizza? Easy. No questions asked. Bacon, pineapple. <sighs> Fight me on it. I, I just mean, need like honestly, a moment of silence. Tell me you're not against pineapple on pizza. Look at how beautiful I am. Of course, I don't eat pineapple on pizza. <laughs> I've never, I've never thought you looked less unattractive than you do right now. Well, I, I have to rethink our friendship and what I want to do. You know, the fact that you put bacon on your pizza with pineapple instead of ham does make me trust you a bit more. Yeah. I mean, honestly, bacon and ham, they're, it's the same thing. It's not. No. no it's the same. It's the same animal, you know? Yes. But when you use bacon as opposed to ham, it's just a more even distribution rather than just getting these slices of ham that you like bite into and pull it off pull all the cheese off. It's just, it's, I don't know why people, it's so You've rudimentary. About <laughs> You've thought about this a lot. <laughs> what have you done this week? Worked. I've literally just been working. So we're both aligned on, we're just, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Only when you work, you bring joy to people and I am <laughs> ripping out their hair of their bodies. You do bring joy to people. And we're going to talk about that later. I know. You absolutely do. I mean, I, um, it's fun ecstatic after I leave from seeing you and getting hair ripped out of my body. You would think you would think it'd be opposite. But I'm literally <laughs> like those dogs, you know, that like they go on the ground and they rub their butt around on the carpet. <laughs> I don't. I don't have no <laughs> not what minus the worms part. <laughs> Why like, are you rubbing when you've got your like a smooth butt? butt. <laughs> you want to like slide it everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> Tess, well, Tess, we have to have a conversation <laughs> on why you're dragging your freshly waxed butt on things, especially the ground. <laughs> I was so prepared for today's podcast, <laughs> and it's just taken such a weird turn. <laughs> All right, redirect. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, I wish I had more to talk about my week, but it's just, I'm just working so much and I'm exhausted and I'm thrilled to be here. And I'm also thrilled to play Would You Rather with you. Yes, I love Would You Rather. (laughs) Clearly, you can see I overthink things. <laughs> I mean, I... So, word, would you rather is a perfect game for me. I overthink things. That's my middle name. Is Tess oh. overthink things. Holiday. Holiday. Yeah. Wow. I employed my fans to ask me these questions mm-hmm. because they are little baby devils like me. So, <laughs> they have come up with some pretty good would you rather. Okay. The first one is from uh, Dinosaur Lover 78 would you rather accidentally like an old photo of your ex on Instagram or accidentally send a sext to your mom? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't have an ex. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would definitely rather like their picture. Yeah. I mean, who the, who the fuck cares? Also, I'm super close with my mom. So if I accidentally sent her a, a sex, it'd be really fucking weird. But like, no shame in my game. It reminds me of that <laughs> TikTok where, did you see it? Where the the girl plays the audio recording of her grandma because her grandma accidentally sent her a nude. Oh my Like her God, grandma's no. dating somebody and sent her granddaughter Stop. the nude that was supposed to go to the guy that she was talking to. And she's like, baby, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, no. Grandma didn't mean to send that to you. Wait, should there be an age limit on nudes? <laughs> like- <laughs> no, listen, if Grandma's feeling herself, Grandma, then get it, Grandma. <laughs> she, listen, I hope I'm still sending nudes to my significant other or partner when I'm well in my 80s. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> At Mickey Mouse Club 2324, would you rather have a pause button in your life or a rewind button? Mm-mm-mm. Pause. Why? Because I think sometimes we get really caught up in a moment and react, like we react before we can think. So if I could just pause real quick, gather my thoughts, and then proceed. It would be a lot better than I feel like if you start rewinding your life, you know, the whole butterfly effect thing comes into play (laughs) and like weird shit starts happening to people like I don't want to deal with that. If we could just pause. Yeah. But I wouldn't I wouldn't want to rewind anything. I like the idea of having a pause button because, you know, I'm like I'm dating somebody and (laughs) they're (laughs) they're not (laughs) like. I mean, it's like casually dating somebody, Mm -hmm. even though we both deleted our Tinders. So I guess, you know, it doesn't matter. But I enjoy their company so much Mm -hmm. that like I find myself just like, oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this. (laughs) Um, I find myself like wanting to pause it so I can like remember yeah, these moments that I have with this person. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, because I think that life moves really quick. It does. Like life doesn't stop for any moment that you have. And so to be able to like take time, regardless of if it's like a new relationship, grieving somebody yeah. or something or a promotion or something like that. I feel like sometimes you just want a little bit more time to like appreciate that moment. Um, Are you sure you're not gay? That was a gay answer. I'm sure. (laughs) Strictly dickly. (laughs) Um, This question I picked specifically because you are a goober. At Diamond in the Rough 12, would you rather adopt a British accent every time you're having a serious conversation or laugh every time someone cries? (laughs) I just um, know I'm you. I'm the kind of guy who laughs at a funeral. Okay, I understand <laughs> what I mean. Well, you soon will. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> no. Um, you would do the British accent. I would do the British accent, but I'd do an Australian accent, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I learned to start talking in an Australian accent, and I can no longer do a British <laughs> accent to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> you have, I mean... As triggering as it is to hear an Australian <laughs> accent for me, you are killing that Australian accent. It, it was Steve Irwin. I was obsessed with him. 
I think we have time for one more and I'm saved the best for last. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At LeChef Michael wants to know, would you rather have Gordon Ramsay scream at you while teaching you how to cook good food or never get to prepare your food again? Gordon Ramsay, bring it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, yes. What is that? <laughs> what are you? A stupid sandwich. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm obsessed with Gordon Ramsay. I love him so much. <laughs> okay. So part of why I asked you to be a guest on my show is because you do a lot to help others. And, you know, I know that probably having someone that removes body hair for a living on my podcast might seem weird, but the more I've gotten to know you and like what you do and also just like me myself using the services that you provide, I know how much it's helped me and how much I've learned and so we're just going to we're just going to jump right in it. Let's do it. So tell everybody how you got started. So I moved he I moved to LA in 2016 because I thought I was going to do brows. Mm-hmm. I was like I'm going to be a makeup artist and a brow artist and when I was in school I was like the only one who like I really enjoyed waxing and then everybody started letting me wax their Brazilians and I was like, I don't know why they trust me. Like, (laughs) and then after I graduated school, I started working at a bigger like wax center and I just got really good and really liked it because it's a very vulnerable position to be in, you know, like not everybody's just out here spread, spread Eagle (laughs) for someone when they're their hairiest, you know? I even get, you know, like myself, you and I have been friends for years now. And literally, you just waxed me on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, I got weird. Yeah. And it had been like, I don't know. Well, I think also, I mean, because Tess likes to wait. <laughs> Tess likes to wait until it's the most painful process. And so well, this time. You, so if you do get a, so for everybody listening, a Brazilian mm-hmm. is where you remove all of the hair from down there. Right. All of it. Front to crack. Front to crack. And that's what I get. Mm -hmm. And you are supposed to go every four weeks. Yes. Because it hurts less. But I just like kind of thought that that was a myth until. Until I forced her to get it done (laughs) in four weeks. And it didn't hurt at all. Exactly. It was, it was mostly an enjoyable experience. Mm Mm-hmm. So where you where were we where were you going with that about waiting pain for you were you were I interrupted you you were telling a story you don't remember we were talking about how you got started mm-hmm. Brazilians you loved it mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't remember <laughs> so how did you how did you start with like you have your own Spot. My own studio. Okay, so I started at a big wax center and I got really good. Oh, that's what we were talking about, that it's a very vulnerable thing. Um, and I just have, I like to think I have a personality who like makes people feel comfortable in a situation, especially su- such as spread eagle when you're <laughs> fu- like full bush, yeah. you know? Um, and so after that, I started working for a brow company in Venice. And I was renting there um, every day. I was paying rent for the days that I was there. And then I was just like, you know, I can, for cheaper, I could do this by myself, be here. Like if somebody wanted a 2 a.m. Brazilian, like I could do it if I wanted to. So I opened up my own studio in Santa Monica, Wax That Ash. It's, you have the <laughs> cutest name, Wax That Ash. It's the cutest name. It's so funny because I, it's such a conversation starter too. Whenever anybody asks me for my email my or I pay yeah. with my business card, it's, um, and so yeah, it just, it evolved into, into Wax That Ash. And now I have my own spot. I love like being my own business owner and working for myself, making my own schedule. So speaking of being, you know, a business owner, and I've seen you, you know, I've known you since before you had your own spot, but, you know, what challenges did you face in wanting to open your own spot? Like, I know that it wasn't easy. You, your brain is very meticulous. You plan everything (laughs) out. I'm, 
you know, the kind of person that just wakes up and decides that I want to start my own business. And then I <laughs> flail around like that Kermit gif where his arms are like everywhere until I figure it out. But yeah, maybe you can help others with actual advice because I'm, you know. Um, okay. So I was scared shitless. Like there was, whenever you're opening up or going on out on your own, like it's a scary process, you know, especially I'm terrified of like tax evasion and like being <laughs> arrested by the IRS. Okay, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, um, just planning, I literally planned out every move. Like I went to my state board website. I, I got, like I took everybody's advice on like how to label my business on how to like all of my licensing that I needed establishment license business license and then I got to do the fun things like start designing my website taking like photo shoots for like me working on clients and with my products like bringing products in but it's all a learning experience I didn't I went to esthetician school I did not go to business school Mm. like so there are things that I've bought for my business that I've spent hundreds of dollars on thinking like this is going to be like such a sick idea and then like it not panning out and that's business and that's okay but it's all a learning experience like absolutely I mean and, you know, when I started modeling, I, I went into it very naively and I wish that I would have gone to a business school because there's so much information that would have been invaluable. And like you said, I've I've wasted thousands of dollars on just bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I wish someone would have been like, hey, girl, don't do that. So yeah. what advice do you have for those that might be wanting to start, you know, their own business and they're not really sure you know, what the fuck to do. Research, research, research. Try to find a mentor. Honestly, like I ended up taking a beauty business course, an eight week course. Yeah, because as like a six figure aesthetician type of course Mm -hmm. thing, because like, yeah, you could probably get there like without taking a course or having that um, that mentorship, but it's going to be slow. You're going to hit so many more hurdles. So if you can alleviate that, find somebody that you're that you look up to mm. in your industry and reach out to them. Like the literal worst somebody can tell you is like, no, I don't have time. They're not going to throat chop you and ban you in the industry. <laughs> like I like that you're, you're, you just went to throat chop. Instantly. Well, I feel like, cause some people like I had somebody call me on my way here today, just like they saw a post that I reach out to my friends in the industry when I feel, when I'm feeling some type of way about my business, you know, like when I feel like I could be doing better or making a decision and she was like you know I just like really wanted to reach out but I didn't want to bother you and I was like you're not bothering me at all like like nobody's gonna but people think they're gonna be such an inconvenience in other people's lives by asking them a question me no oh no it's a waxer (laughs) sounds like a very me conversation (laughs) she's a waxer but you know you never know until you reach out to somebody absolutely I mean you know I, I do think that don't don't rely on other people fixing your issues and giving you the answer for everything. And that's definitely not what you're saying. Right. Um, but it doesn't hurt to reach out. It doesn't hurt. I mean, that's what social media is for. And I think we've kind of lost it over the way, you know, a bit with connecting with people on an authentic level. I mean, that's what Social media was designed to do, you know, social networking. Absolutely. What do you wish you could have told yourself about the path that your life took? Wow, this is a deep question. Oh, Um, we about to get deep, baby. I actually did a Reiki guided meditation. Um, so LA, I know (laughs) the most (laughs) LA thing. Trust me, I know. But um, there was like a moment in this um like session where she where I was looking at myself as a kid and like telling myself what I would like, what I would tell myself, you know? And it was so crazy to think like how hard I was on myself. Like I was telling myself like, girl, you're going to have a fucking rough life. Like you're going to have a real rough go of it. Like, so, and I was just like being so harsh to this little kid. And I'm just like looking at myself as this like young child. And then I was just like, and then it was me telling me 
as an older person, like give yourself grace. Like everything is a learning experience. You know, look how much light you bring to people's lives. Mm. Stop harping on all this darkness and things that are going to put you in a box, put you in a shadow and live your truth. Absolutely. You know, and I think it's so hard, especially with social media. There's, you know, there's a negative side to social media where you get into a place where you can, um, you start, comparing yourself to other people. And I think it's about standing back and recognizing that we're all writing our own stories. And I can't compare my chapter six to your chapter 20 because they're different books. Like it's, it's a totally different path. You're totally right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the amount of times that I've done that to myself and in my own industry and, you know, that's where the saying comes in that I now really live by is that what's meant for you won't pass you. Mm -hmm. And when you know that and you accept that and you can, you can be great at what you do and who you are, even if there's a million other people doing what you're doing, you have Mm -hmm. to know that there's no one else like you Mm -hmm. and that there's room for everybody. Yeah. You know, exactly. Like there are so many, I mean, cause I also teach aesthetics. And so I have a lot of students who will always ask me like, there's so many people in this area that do brows. Like the beauty industry is so saturated. There's mm. so many waxers. And I'm like, do you know how many people are in LA alone? <laughs> so many. Like 12 million. Yeah. Like, don't quote me on that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's the millions. No, yeah, but there's a but lot of people. There are so many people. And so like, they're all not going to one person, you know, <laughs> like uh, there, I'm not waxing that many vaginas. <laughs> like, <laughs> so speaking of vaginas and body hair, what are some misconceptions about body hair? I think the biggest misconception about body hair is that body hair is ugly. Um, that was going to be my next question. Why Why have we been conditioned as a society? Like, so in general, there's so many misconceptions about body hair, but then also we've been conditioned as a society to think that body hair is gross. Right. And obviously, you know, we're, we're like, there's body hair, everybody has body hair, Yeah. no matter how you identify. Yeah. But and it's, it's, you know, what's crazy about it is that I have women who come, men, women, whoever, who come into my business and they'll lay on the table and they'll be like, sorry, I have so much hair or sorry, I'm like a little nervous, like I'm sweating or like, does anybody else have hair on their butt or all these questions about body hair. And I'm like, girl, I've seen it all. Like, it, you are totally normal. Like, whether you want the hair there or you don't, like, that's your prerogative. Like, you don't have, you can come in and get a Brazilian and not remove everything. I have a lot of people leave a triangle, leave a landing strip, we trim it down. Like, mm. you know, you don't have to remove all the hair, but if that's what you want to do because you want to do it. Absolutely. There's a confidence that that comes, you know, at least for me with getting waxed, I am not, listen, I don't care. I haven't had sex in September. <laughs> it's a bit, we're in a pandemic. I'm not ashamed to say. Uh, I am definitely not getting waxed for anyone else but myself yeah. because literally no one is seeing it. But it just makes me feel better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've definitely gone through stages where I've left it. And, you know, for it's just my personal preference. Um, but it's not because I think it's gross. Like I actually, it's funny, you know, this, you do my Brazilians, but then I don't shave under my arms. I'll shave under my arms like every four months. Yeah. She literally (laughs) on Saturday, she came in for a Brazilian. She's like, damn, I just shaved for the first time in months yesterday. I should have waited. I should have. And I'm just like, girl, (laughs) it's because I had a date, but then I was like, is the date going to be under my armpit? I don't think. <laughs> Why did I do I mean, that? But also, I won't let anything ruin a wax for me. Like if, because you have to, like we talked about a little bit ago, um, you typically want to wait four weeks before you get waxed again. If I have a dick appointment or if I'm going to the <laughs> beach or something and it's three weeks in and there's some hair there, uh, sorry. If you don't want it, like yeah. reschedule. Yeah, like, and if I go to the beach, I'm like, if you're that close to me, where you can, where you can see my 
leg and vagina hair, you're too close. First of all, six <laughs> feet COVID. back, it's six COVID. feet. Yeah. <laughs> and regardless of COVID, I'm like, if you, if it makes you that uncomfortable, like you need therapy, you have your own issues. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole other thing of, of, you know, cis men in particular only wanting to be with partners that have no hair and that's a whole other thing that we could get yeah. down to that I think is really fucking weird because we all have hair. And like I said, if if somebody, like you said, <laughs> I didn't say, <laughs> I'm agreeing. <laughs> but like you said, if somebody can't deal with the fact that I have body hair, then they don't get access to yeah. me because- And it's my money that I pay to remove <laughs> this body hair. Like it's my money. It's my time. Absolutely. Like it's my body. So what right do you think you have over my, over my stuff? Mm. Mm-hmm. If I if my hair was down, I would have flipped it. So what's the trend on body hair these days? What are people doing? You don't you don't do uh, vajazzles, but I still feel like that's very much a thing. Maybe not in the more in Vegas. <laughs> vajazzling is huge in Vegas. Really? Yeah. It lasts about three days. If you guys don't know what a vajazzle is, it's basically gluing rhinestones to your vagina. Can you do it if you're fat though? Because I have a fupa. Yeah, you can. I mean, what? Oh, I just don't know. They'll probably just fall. Like the (laughs) the, the gems might fall quicker. Where are they? (laughs) Um, I think a huge trend with body hair right now or with like in the um, Brazilian world, Mm -hmm. you know, is a Brazilian waxing world, I should say, um, is uh, vajacials and V-steams. What... So vagina facial is, what are you talking about? It's basically like, so if you struggle with discoloration, with um, ingrowns, with anything, you know, like, or scars from things, um, you can get a vagacial where it will be a targeted facial treatment for the V. And uh, yeah, steam. Some people do peels. Jelly masks are huge right now. Yeah. I had, first of all, I love doing any, I love all of the the body care treatments that you can do. I feel like I do them all. I didn't even know that this was a thing because mm-hmm. I all of a sudden want a really steamy, fresh. <laughs> yeah. And then under- v, v steams are coming back. V steams. Yeah. It's like where you sit on like a pot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm doing it dis- a disservice. It's where you literally sit on like a thing over like a steaming bucket with like herbs and stuff. And it's supposed to like rejuvenate and. Like, Will you go do one with me? Yeah, let's do it. All right, fine. It's LA. There has to, there's probably someone literally around the corner. Oh yeah. 100%. Great. What do you think of laser hair removal and sugaring? Okay. So I feel like sh- I feel like sugaring in specific, I don't knock it, right? Like everybody has their own thing. But I feel like people who sugar people feel as though they're the elitists of hair removal. And they talk shit on everybody else who does, like whether you're using soft wax, hard wax, going to get laser, they're better. Like they, there's all this stuff. They'll tell you like that the sugar goes into the pore and like <laughs> and pulls it out different. And I'm just like, no, we're both removing it for the root. Like if you want to go sugar, that's fine. It's more natural. That's the one thing that I'll give them. It's sugar, water, and lemon. Okay. Um, but it's the same. Thing it's the same. same. Yeah, it's the same. And then laser, you know, lasers for another certain people. Um, laser is a permanent form of hair or a semi-permanent form of hair removal. Yeah, I do laser on my face and underarms, but I mean, I haven't been in forever. Yeah, and laser is great, but laser can come back like after you like have a kid or go through menopause or any like huge hormonal change. Mm. Um, So the only like permanent form of hair removal is like electrolysis, which is painful. They literally put a needle in each electrolysis follicle. is is a gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not even gonna lie. It's a gnarly. Yeah. So I know that you have a bunch of fun stories. And for the people who are maybe hesitating to go get wax because they're embarrassed, they're self-conscious, um, I get it. Uh definitely nothing to be embarrassed about. 
I have a few embarrassing wax stories myself. <laughs> I mean, it's a human body. Like there's, it is what it is. Stuff's going to happen. But do you have a kind of a crazy story that just sticks out <laughs> to you? Yes. <laughs> Let's hear it. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Put down your food. Put down your drink. <laughs> Sit. Take a seat. <laughs> you do not want to be eating or drinking for this next segment. <laughs> I can tell. I can say whatever, right? Like on yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> um. So when I work, and none of this has happened really when I've owned my own business. It happened when I was working for a big wax center. Um, a girl comes in, they always ask you at the front desk, like, do you need to use the restroom? Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah. So she goes, so I'm I, I don't like how you're already smiling right now before you. It's talk not, this. it's not even funny because it was me <laughs> like, who had to deal with this. <laughs> um, but she comes out of the restroom and I was like, hi, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, I'm your waxer bring her into the room, whatever. We go through the whole wax. It's totally fine. And then I say, okay, put your knees to your chest and we're going to do the butt strips. So that's literally when you do happy baby, the yoga pose, or you literally are laying on your back and grab behind your knees. Yes. Um, for the people who don't, who aren't mm -hmm. familiar. And she had like shit herself. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Okay. She what like, do you mean she shit herself? I think she sharted <laughs> while I was giving her Brazilian because she literally, it was like carrot puree <laughs> in between her cheeks. And me, I'm a professional, right? So like, I'm not going to be like, gross, <laughs> girl, you know? So I literally just waxed around it. <laughs> you waxed around the shart. Yeah, I didn't get cl that close to her butthole. Like, she didn't have her cleanest wax she ever had because I'm also not her mother. I'm not a mother of a toddler who's, like, going to wipe her ass for her. But I waxed around it, and I was like, all right, you're all set. And I'll see you in four weeks. And did she come back in four weeks? Yeah. Was there poop? No. I honestly... Because then I just wonder, like, did she go home and think to herself, like, was this there during my wax? Or, like, when did this happen? <laughs> I hope that for her sake, she didn't even notice it. Well, she would have had to at some point. <laughs> I mean, like, it wasn't, it wasn't just like a little. No, stop it. It wasn't just like a little bit. Okay. Like, because some people are just like, like some people, I'm part of a lot of waxing groups on Facebook and they'll like say like there was like a little piece of poop or like a poop flake or something. No, this girl had <laughs> literally like a quarter <laughs> of smushed shart. So, so there's so many things that you never want to hear. And <laughs> you I asked, think I just you asked, asked smushed shark. You know, um, <laughs> so it's funny because I feel like a lot of people ask about whack, like horror whack stories. And then you tell them and then they're just like. Oh, I regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I will carry. If I had a locket, I would put that story in my locket. Oh my God. Yeah, it's my it party trick. When I go it's to parties, great. like that's, that's my party trick. So this feels kind of a weird segue. <laughs> but I get a lot of people when I post, when I post you or share that I get waxed because there aren't that many plus size folks that really talk about, you know, like are very open really about removing body hair. Like I've posted, I've literally done a live yeah. while you were waxing. Yep. My, that was like one of our first waxes it was, together. It was. <laughs> so can plus size bodies get Brazilians? Yes. Um, I think it's honestly crazy because whenever you do post, I have a lot of clients who've like had the confidence after you've posted that you're getting Aww. a Brazilian to come in because realistically, like, I mean, I remember when I first started getting uh, my Brazilians and I was just like, oh my gosh, is the bed going to like, am I going to like fit on a bed yeah, or it's valid. whatever? Yeah. And Cause I'm not a small girl. Like I'm 250 pounds. Like, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And so being able to be confident in like, yeah, you're not going to break my bed. My bed mm. can support 500 pounds. Like you. Oh, so I can still gain some weight and be, go. be Gucci. We, yeah, we nice still got room. Nice to know. Um, and that it's, it's literally the same wax. It's just like sometimes like you even know, like you have to hold yourself a little bit yeah. just to help keep like the skin taut and that's it. But there's literally no shame in it. It's like a lot of people are so nervous because they're just like, oh, like I'm fat or blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, girl, like if you want me to rip the hair out of you, like we're going to make it happen regardless of what size you are, you know? And I know that people feel so good after, you yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like you can probably see them feeling more confident like each time they see you. Yeah, I had one girl. She came in to me because of you. Um, she was like, I saw you on like when Tess posted about you and she would drive like almost 40 minutes to see me. And uh, the first time she came in, she was so scared, just like barely opening her legs. Like I was like, girl, like I'm going to see it all anyways. You know, I'm up in here. Like we're trying to get all of the hair. <laughs> and then every appointment she'd get more comfortable. Like and her son would wait for us out of outside of my suite. And uh, Every she would add more services on. So Aww. then she was doing like her back, her full butt, her Brazilian, her full leg. And those are all because a lot of people also think like full butt and back, like I'm a girl, like can it should I be doing that? Blah blah. blah. I'm like, if you don't want the hair there, like then get it. I have yeah. so many women who come in, get a full butt, Brazilian, and full back. Ain't no shame. No. And also for those listening, because obviously we, you know, we've referenced like women and stuff like that a lot, but body hair is engendered. Anyone has body hair. Anyone can remove it. Anyone can keep it. It's your prerogative. The whole point is, is, you know, it's the intent in which you do this. And if you don't want it, you know, yeah. you, you don't have to have it. Yeah. I have, <laughs> I have so many women who come in with their significant others and, or their male partners and they get their back, like the, their boyfriends or husbands or whatever, get their back waxed or their chest wax. And they're just like, it's just like, seems so soft. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. I love that little couple wax situation. Yeah. What is your favorite part of your job? Um, I love that I have this ability to make somebody feel more comfortable and confident in their body. Because I know for me, I struggled a long, a, for a long time with my body hair and shaving and just like getting like the redness and itchiness yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't until I found waxing when I was 21, like where I was like, yeah, I could be in a bathing suit whenever I want. Like I feel more, I feel way better in my bathing suits. I feel, um, cleaner when I work out. Like it was such a confidence boost for me. And so seeing that I can not only bring that in my teaching at school to like have other people perform the services, but also to all my clients like who come in and they're just like, oh my gosh, this was like, this was so quick. This was like, I actually look forward to coming and get my waxes like and talking to you. And, and I just love that I'm part of their lives. Like, like I'm, I've been a part of one of my clients through her almost her whole pregnancy now her sister's pregnant and like all this stuff and I'm just like I basic I'm become part of She's the family bring your baby to wax I'm just, kidding. She, <laughs> I'm just kidding. don't come for me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but it's like nice to like become like not only somebody's waxer but like part of their family I mean you literally <laughs> slid your way into yeah, I my life. <laughs> you ripped the the, holiday home. You ripped the hair off my body and off my heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to make a t-shirt. That says that. <laughs> How does what you do empower others to live their best lives? I think when you feel your most confident, then you put out this whole different energy when you do the things in your life, you know? Mm. Um, and we've talked about this, like during the pandemic, a lot of people still reached out to me trying to get like black market Brazilians, <laughs> you know? I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, because you would think with people being home at COVID, and like I said earlier, you know, those are things that you wouldn't think of. But I mean, I, I mean, obviously, I did not get waxed by you for quite some time until... Yeah. I think you guys were able to open the first, I don't remember. The third time. The it's third, when oh, I, yeah. When I like stayed open. Yeah. So it had been a while, um, 
but I mean, definitely wasn't doing it for anyone other well, that's than the myself. thing too, because I do waxing and lash lifts, and you would think that people wouldn't want to get their lashes done because they're not going anywhere, or their wax is done because they're they're not going anywhere. But the amount of people who are just like, you know, like I just love how I look when I wake up, and my eyes just like are so much more open with the mm-hmm. lash lift, or that I just like can go out on a walk and like feel less sweaty, like without like with a Brazilian or whatever the case may be. Like if you have that feeling for yourself everything that you do is different you know absolutely and I think I think a lot of people think that it might just be something like superficial like a very superficial thing and I'm like no people do it because they want to not because they have to absolutely so my last question for you Ashley is the question that I ask everybody on my slumber party and it cannot the answer cannot be hanging out with me so how did you show yourself love today, Ashley? Um, I'm, can I say what I'm going to do? Yeah. Because I just basically woke up and. <laughs> thro- oh, yes, you can. <laughs> because you are a man with a plan. Yeah. Today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how, so how are you going to show yourself love today? That can be your question. I am getting my manicure, my pedicure, throwing on some lingerie and meeting up with somebody that, well, we're not going to say it's name on here. No, we're not. But it's somebody, it's, you're meeting up with somebody that. That we can have fun together with. We can make pizzas. (laughs) While naked. (laughs) Inside of each other. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't had sex in so long. (laughs) I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Oh, so we have talked about a lot today. We, you know, basically the gist of this and what I hope you guys take away from it is everybody has body hair, regardless of how you identify your gender, whatever. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. Body hair is not gross. Mm -mm. It's totally normal. 100% normal. And if you want to remove it, remove it. And if you want to keep it, keep it. Keep it because she's cute too. Yeah. And we have also talked a lot. I think overall what I've taken away from this is you have to, you have to go for what you want and not let you stand in your own way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that we are definitely our own worst enemies and we are the people who can hold ourselves back the most when, if you just take that leap of faith. Absolutely. Auntie Ashley, Ashley Melter. Yes. Thank you for being my guest today. Thank you for having me and for Tim Tam slamming. (laughs) (laughs) Where can our followers find you on social media? Um, you can find me mainly on Instagram and Facebook, Wax That Ash. Um, and that's pretty much it. I love it. I have a couple YouTube videos, but they're all directed for. Estheticians. And you also have a you also have um, a course that you're going to be launching in the near future. So yes, I do one on one courses, and but I'm working on my online course right now. Cute. So keep an eye out for that. And yeah, I love you a lot. I love you more. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you to everyone at home and at your own summer party for listening. And remember, if you were listening to this episode, you can also check us out on YouTube so you can see our cute pajamas and our cute setup at the studio. And if you were watching this episode, you can also listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate and review, like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye.